All right, good evening everyone. I'm Tim Howard. I'm with Magicraft, with the legendary Josh Wolf, who's in Copenhagen at the moment. It's about presenting Magicraft. He was just in um, Japan actually, uh, presenting Magicraft there. We teach uh, kids to code and adults actually in um, Minecraft. Here's a spell I prepared earlier called Boomchick. I'll just dem demonstrate it's not the, the main part of my talk, but uh, it's pretty cool. This is Minecraft. Just gonna wait for my engine to reload. So here, um, <clears throat> I made a spell when you throw a snowball that summons a chicken. <laughs> and then it destroys that chicken. <laughs> Strikes them with lightning and then destroys them. So you can actually um, create some chickens and blow them up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the kind of uh, thing we teach your kids in Minecraft. <laughs> Anyway, uh, this is not what I'm talking about tonight. Uh, we obviously um, use GitHub a tremendous amount. GitHub is totally amazing. I love it. <laughs> um, what we have, uh, what I'm talking about tonight is using GitHub as a, um, as a CMS. So, like, if you're building any kind of application, you need uh, content and then your actual framework, whatever you're using. Like if you're doing a simple site, you'll often just put all your content directly into your HTML. But after a while that becomes pretty annoying to scale. And also writing HTML kind of sucks, to be honest. Um, I much prefer Markdown. Who here doesn't know what Markdown is? Okay, Markdown's great. That, these, um, this page here is actually written in Markdown, so you can do bullets without having to put list tags, you can do headers and all sorts of stuff uh, really easily. Uh, and it's pretty much got everything you need to write blog posts or like most basic content. Um, now, you can use GitHub as your backend for your website fairly easily. And I wrote a little repo here, which is minuscule, um, to demonstrate that. So this is just a basic HTML page. Uh, it looks like um, this, which is pretty boring at the moment. Um, and I added some script. I'm actually using some uh, jQuery here. to load content. So I created another repo and I've called it um, GitHub CMS content. So I have one called GitHub CMS, which is the actual site, and then I have GitHub CMS content. Uh, so here, for example, I have the bullets for my site, for, for my talk tonight. So if I click here, I get a, a raw URL, which is actually directly the markdown. If I copy that uh, URL and uh, paste it in here, this is just using jQuery, really simple for this demonstration, to do a REST request to get that. And then once I got it, I'm going to find the div called uh, with the class post and put the data in there. So you can see that, that works. It looks really crap though, um, because of course it's markdown, it doesn't know how to uh, move the markdown of the box. So there's another, um, there's many, many of them. This one I found earlier, it's called Showdown. It's um, just a jQuery package basically. I get it from the CDN here. Um, I use Showdown to make HTML out of the markdown. And then I have, um, a rich, you know, I have, I have my post, I have my content <coughs> in my site. Um, 
So there's a more, more, more URLs. The other thing I, found, I discovered about this when I was playing around with it is that the more uh, GitHub um, server actually caches for about 10 minutes, which is kind of painful if you want to update your content regularly. Just, just something to be aware of. Um, so if I went here now, now to that post and updated it, um, Something a bit extra in there, it changes. It doesn't get updated. So you have to wait a few minutes for that to work. There are ways around which I'll, I'll get to as well. Um, now, if you wanted to, what are the benefits of doing this? One thing is you don't have to write a CRUD API for your website. Like, if you develop applications, especially like content management style applications, the amount of work it takes to build like admin views, where you can edit your posts, you can save it, you can do all that, delete it, um, it's a bunch of work actually. It's like another, maybe even more than half the work just to do all that. Whereas GitHub these days hasn't always been as great as it is now, but it's pretty great. Um, whoa, it's atmospheric. So here, uh, I've added a, um, I'm just appending to that a, um, a link to edit that post. So now I have a little edit link here, which very conveniently opens in GitHub where I can edit my post. Kind of useful. You could easily like uh, put that behind some kind of login. Uh, you could even, if you wanted to do a really simple one, just put it in localhost, are you admin? Store of variable which uh, determines with your editor. Of course, you already have the permissions on this because unless somebody has um, collaborative rights on this repository, they're not going to be able to edit it. So you don't have to worry about any of that kind of uh, authentication. Um, you can also do images, in, um, it's, it's a great way to serve your images. Um, so let's go. Puppies, get some images of a puppy. Yeah, save it. Uh, I made a directory here, by the way, if you wanted to make a directory to put your images in, or say you want to make any directory, um, GitHub provides a square new file. You'd go in here and you'd go over that. Put your directory in there. And then if you go forward slash, that creates the directory for you. Um, so I, I'm just going to make a place over here called index.html. Save that. And say if I want to upload a file, I can. Um, this picture is called an impossibly cute puppy. You can actually upload multiple here. You can put a commit message if you want. It actually fills it out automatically for you, which is quite convenient. Uh, and then we have this directory with this image in here called puppy. Now, one gotcha here is that um, it's a little tricky to find the, um, the raw URL here in the, in the interface. But I assure you, it's there. If you go, uh, if I take this path plus the file name here, um, so this index one I created earlier, if I uh, yeah, get the raw URL from this one and just replace the um, path, there's, there's that um, image being served there. And then I can post it, I can place it in my post uh, just by using the markdown format uh, for images. I think I might have just do this. No.
not just places in the whole URL on there. Um, yeah, you have to use the markdown format for images. Um, so then back to this uh, more complex example here. Uh, if I want to get around the, uh, the caching issue, I can actually use this contents API from uh, GitHub, which is fantastic. I only discovered this fairly recently. Oh, that's great. So um, this is in, if you look up GitHub, uh, GitHub API for contents. This has a full contents API, so you can actually read your content directly from the API. Now here, what we do is we get we get a list of all the files in the. Uh, in this directory at contents. So if I go into a subdirectory called posts, I get all the um, files inside there. I don't get the, uh, the content here though. I don't get the content until I take one of these and I append it to the end. And then I get a single post and I get the content here. It's actually base64 encoded. Um, so say for example, if we actually look at where that is, um, my content repo, I've got this directory called posts, which has two MD files in it. So I basically, uh, here I created a, a get request, which is gonna get the root, which I showed you before, which contains a, short, a list of all the files in that directory. I do a rest request here, uh, to get, that, to get that list, and then for each file, if it's a file, because you can also have directories, so you can say if it's a directory, then also call that subdirectory. Um, but if it's a file in this case, then I'm gonna get the individual one, and um, I'm gonna use this, um, this is a base64 decoding um, utility available in the browser. And then I'm basically going to bring that append it to the posts uh, directory, so you can see that. the posts um, container. Yeah, so the posts turn up there. And then again, I've just gone in here and uh, created a, a post edit URL, base URL. I'm appending a um, here, appending a uh, edit URL on the bottom of that, so you can then edit those fairly easily. Very convenient. Okay, so yeah, the, the usefulness of this is you can avoid building your own private APIs. You can leverage uh, GitHub um, to provide that for you. You get a full revision history. Like if I actually, um, if I go here, I can see all the commits against that um, this content repository. So like. You get that revisioning for free, which is also really useful. Um, you can do more advanced stuff if you've got a server um, and you wanted to put a caching layer in via a server and still host your, um, we actually do this in Magicraft. We write a whole lot of uh, content as markdown files and then we <coughs> I just have a GraphQL action which pulls them in and then saves them to a local database or caches in there. Um, you can use a webhook uh, on the repository, so when you push to that, re-pull re the, um, uh, the content, and put it into the local database or whatever. One thing to be aware of with the API that we have here, if you go to api.github and put rate limit on there, you'll see that you have a limit of 60 requests per hour. So you're, if you're actually serving your website from um, uh, GitHub API, then very quickly you're gonna run out. That's your personal rate limit, by the way. So other people viewing your website, they'll be using their own rate limit. However, you can boost that if you, and you'd only do this if you were doing it um, 
uh, you only do this if you're doing it uh, server side. You can actually put in your uh, client ID and the secret. I just took the secret out there because um, <laughs> it's my secret. <laughs> uh, and you see that the the, the, um, the limit there jumps up quite a lot. It goes up to 5,000 requests per hour for the GitHub API. So if you're calling large repositories, a way to do it is to have a webhook, um, have your secret on your server. When the webhook comes in, crawl it, cache it on the server, and then um, you're not going to have any problems with that. Uh, yeah, the other, the other cool thing about it, obviously, is that you get um, uh, local, get your IDE support. So if I don't want to edit directly on GitHub, which for larger ones I don't, I can um, I can edit that in my favorite IDE, which is really quite cool. Get my post there. Edit in this markdown in my editor. It's also great for like configuration if you've got like uh, you know a JSON file for configuration and so forth. Um, it's very easy to build a React component if you're using React. You just have a component which takes property, which is like the, the URL or something like that, and loads it in. Lots of cool stuff you can do with this. I I think GitHub's absolutely fantastic platform. Of course, we teach kids how to code in Minecraft. Every every time they save. Uh, a spell, it goes into GitHub. We now have direct GitHub integration where you can actually edit your spells and your code, like I showed you before. Um, this code, I can actually edit it in my local IDE. And when I push to GitHub, we also use a webhook to pull it down to the Minecraft server. <laughs> so yeah, basically GitHub all the way. It's fantastic. Uh, um, and yeah, you can do great things with it and save yourself a lot of time. Is there any uh, questions about this stuff? Can you do videos? Huh? Can you do videos? Can you load videos up to here? I'm not sure about that actually. Let me try. Upload files. I think I have a video here. Can you can you serve videos from there straight? I don't know. I use GitHub uh, uh, YouTube myself. Yowza, that's a big file. Okay, <laughs> file must be less than 25 megabytes. <laughs> See, GitHub's also cool because it has um, great uh, messages there. Yowza. <laughs> uh, any other questions about this? Can you serve JavaScript? Can you serve JavaScript? Well, that's what we do with. Um, <laughs> that's what, yeah, you're sure, why not? I can try it actually. Uh, I go back here. If I create a, it could be a bit dodgy. Let's try it. Uh, alert dot js. Alert. Really? Let's see what happens. Do I have an extra coin? Do I have an extra coin? No, I don't know. I'll spot it. I'm used to my um, ID, which one in the, yeah, see, I can get up even highlights on the phone. Of course, I can return. This will almost certainly work, I think. So I could, um, of course I can just do it this way. Uh, and, um, I'm going to pull the toy, this one. I, mean, I can do it like this. Put it in here, that will, that will certainly work. And you, you could probably do it a different way, uh, like append it as a script tag. Just do a script tag, use jQuery, append a script tag, put the content in there. I think GitHub uh, Markdown also supports JavaScript inside of it. Cannot refuse to execute script, okay. So, <laughs> oh, because means type is text plain. Right. Yeah. Different domains. Mm -hmm. Local local files are served 
content as well. I know these ones then. I just want to see here. Uh, sure. yeah. I think it's used raw get, but you can file it with like just text in. Raw get? Yeah, like the script you've got above. Put text JavaScript in here. And then what? Refuse, okay. So no, you can't do that. <laughs> Although you probably could if you wrap, yeah, that's probably a way to make it work. Most of the stuff you can make work if you hang around with it for a while. Any other questions or comments? All right, thanks very much.